Hey, this is Lara from Primus. We're here on my episode of Riff Lords. We're gonna go through some Primus songs and I'm going to break them down, try to show you how they were constructed, why they were constructed, make some excuses for why they were constructed. I'm gonna show you how to take your bad ideas and turn them into good ideas. And uh, hopefully we can uh, get to the bottom of why things are done this way. All right, we will start off with uh, our biggest hit. I think it went to number one on every chart on the planet, um, just above Jump. And it's Jerry was a race car driver. The song starts with a bass riff, a very staccato bass riff that goes just like that, perfect pitch. Uh, and then the guitar comes in with a simple just you can do that, right? Uh, then from there, it kind of just takes off into this. It's like a roller coaster kind of taken off, where it's a flat and fifth. And eventually it moves ahead and goes to this riff. And eventually it goes to the heavy part, which is. All right, here are those riffs at half speed. So now breaking down what those parts are, it's a uh, there, which is a flatted fifth. You can really start wherever you like, and it's just you want to kind of like you're just taking off up to the 19th fret, and then it's kind of just this like wiggly sort of. So it's just like wow. You move it down a half step. This guy. So when you go up, you're kind of just going between, the, you're getting a vibrato on both of them. Like something really bad is about to happen. So it's just very creating some tension. And you're hitting both strings, trying to hit them both at the same time, and then letting them ring while you hit them. Starting this riff with the pull off, seventh fret, G string, into the D string on the ninth, and the whole phrase you'll do that. Then move up a half step, eight and ten. And the whole phrase ends with this. And it's just, you just grab that same as the beginning, and you just go. It's designed for all skill levels. Okay, so then when it goes to the heavy part, there's a chunky riff, which kind of goes along with the bass part, which half speed is this. And it's just the E and A string muted, and it's open, third, second, open, fifth, third, second. And the secret to this part is sometimes I'll throw in just a half step higher. No one notices. It's so low, it's kind of out of tune, but for some reason it tricks your mind to feeling like it's not repetitive. And the palm muting this, you know, trying to uh, conjure up my inner head field here. And, uh, it's kind of just above the bridge most of the time. Kind of depends from guitar to guitar, guitar but uh, just like right on the bridge. You know, you can find your sweet spot of wherever. Just kind of looking through the most chunk. All right, so I will play all those parts through at half speed.
So that's the half speed. This is the supposed real speed. <laughs> For this song, uh, those damn blue collar tweakers, it starts off with a soundscape of sorts, which sounds like this. <laughs> So this sound here, this is probably one of the things that if people ask me mostly, how are you getting that sound? So this is what it is. It's basically, you're gonna need a wah pedal for this. You're gonna get nowhere without a wah pedal. And it is a chord, which is G string, 13th fret, B string, 12th fret, E string, 15th fret. Together they sound like this. You heard that chord in a lot of Taylor Swift songs, I know. Uh, <laughs> and this chord, basically the way it came about is I tried to pick three notes that don't go together. And that's what it is. So together it sounds like this. All you gotta do is play those three notes together and move your foot. Yeah, so the way this part came about, we were sitting in our rehearsal room just goofing around and I was sitting there, just I had that chord. And I happened to step on the wall and go. And I think everyone looked at each other and went like, that's how the song's gonna start. And I was like, all right, done and done. Okay, so this next song, Groundhog's Day, it's kind of two songs in one song. So we're gonna kind of pick it apart and I'll show you the first half first, and then we'll move on to the second half. Uh, it starts off kind of playing over a bass chord, which is this. And the riff over it is. All right, so let me show you that riff at half speed. So what this is, uh, it's, it's basically a, an arpeggio of what this chord is. No one knows what that chord is. I looked it up. No one knows what it's called. And the notes are you'll slide up to the eighth fret on the E string, then seventh fret on the A string, eighth fret on the D string, tenth fret, ninth fret G string, eleventh fret on the B string, and it's a bend up. And then 10th fret on the B string, just bend up and down, then just to slide down from the 9th to the 7th on the G string. And then on the same string, G string, you'll bend up from the 7th, 5th fret, 7th fret. So one more time at half speed. And full speed. So that's the first, basically, 
part of the song. And so what the song does is it sort of goes along with that sort of melody and it's very, kind of lulls you to sleep and then it breaks into another part of the song which is this. <laughs> Or goes. So those are the two parts. That's what it does. It busts and it goes back and forth with those parts, and that's the gist of where it breaks in. So here's that part slowed down. Breaking this part down, it's best to look at it as a bunch of little parts, which it's like five different parts that go by really fast. The first part is this chord, uh, you know, ninth fret, and you just go, and then, which is a pull off. It's like the same note, and then, now this is all the way up. 17th to the 21st fret, or 20th, I don't know, I can't really do numbers. All right, so this part basically, you know, it starts, you'll, you'll hit this just bar chord down to sort of blast it off, and then it kind of goes back and forth, it'll go, and you go up to and you'll slide up. So when you're playing this, you're gonna really, you're going back and you're going all over. So the idea is you're going up here, then you're going up. It's very loopy, like you're going back and forth. So you got to really get used to like, and you got to get used to stopping. So you're really all over the place on this one, and it's best to try it slow. If you're playing this riff, you can practice in pieces going just practice playing the next part maybe you just practice that and as you get used to playing stopping and starting different places you know, start it slow, and eventually you can get it up to speed. All right, for this next song, I'm gonna switch over to the green V because it's the only guitar this song can be played on. Don't try it on any other guitar. You, if you need to play this song, call me, and I'll loan you the guitar, and you can play this song. All right, so now that I've got the guitar that you have to have for this song, even though I recorded it way before I had the guitar, don't ask. Uh, this is uh, the guitar from South Park, and this is what it sounds like. Okay, so here I'm gonna play this at a slower speed so you can maybe hear what's going on.
So this one's a very, it's a bizarre shape. So what you want to do is you're trying to get the E string to ring while holding down the fourth fret of the B string. And at the same time, you're trying to hit the D string on the sixth fret and still have the G string ring. And you want them all together to go. So you gotta really get your fingers straight up and down. And then there's muting on top of that. So you're trying to get a. So after that, then you have to try to throw in. Which is third and sixth frets on G string. Then you throw on the E string, third and fourth frets. Then you move to a tritone of uh, it's this. Third and fifth frets on the B and G string. Then move it up a step and a half. And then the second half of it is the same chord. Then you throw in this chord, which is. That's uh, seventh fret D string, fifth fret G string, uh, fourth fret E string. Then you slide up, and if you have a gonculator, which you should have, you hit that, and it goes. Once again, that's the same sound that's in most Taylor Swift songs. Okay, so one more time, slower. So you got that, right? So now that you've got it, you got to go full speed. And here's that at full speed. So with the song, that was the original version. Then when the TV show came about and we realized that the opening of a TV show is probably not a minute and a half long. We had to speed it up, and along with speeding up, it had to go up an octave. So, hence the capo. Capoing this at the 12th fret, thus turning this into an octave higher guitar. Here is the sped up and capoed version. You don't necessarily have to hit all. Just the top three kind of sounds, I think is what end up sounding more like it. We got this in the mail. They said, hey, these guys want you to write the song for the TV show. Here's, the, uh, here's what it is, and it was the spirit of Christmas. And we put it on, and we thought it was the greatest thing we've ever seen. But we also said, well, there's no way this is ever getting on TV. <laughs> so, but we loved it so much that we, we go, okay, well, we're going to write the song. And I, I, honestly, it's probably one of the ones I focused the most of my whole life on writing these parts, because I wanted it to be so perfect for this TV show, because it was so cool. So I sat there in my basement. And actually, when I wrote it, I remember it being very hard to try to, to get that part to like play. So. All these years later, now I can sort of play it. Okay, so I'm gonna switch to another guitar because this next song can be played on pretty much any guitar. I mean, just pick one up and play it, doesn't matter. But any, but not this one. So I'm gonna get a different guitar. Wait a minute, I'm being told. Okay, the lawyers are saying that it has to be played on a black Les Paul with the Floyd Rose, and it has to be this exact guitar. So I take that back. You can't play it on any other guitar except for this one. 
or any Gibson, it's fine. But the Floyd Rose. All right, now you'll see in this song, you will see why we need the Floyd Rose, why it is essential to this piece of music. Uh, this song is uh, called The Heckler, and it has a guitar in it and stuff, and I play it, and this is how it goes. <laughs> So here's those parts slowed down. And the next part. This first part is a G diminished chord. Uh, those notes are it's G, 6th string, 3rd fret, A on the 4th fret, D on the 2nd fret, and G on the 3rd fret. And it sounds like this. So what I'm doing, it's kind of like circus music. I'm playing, it's like oompa pa music. Uh, with my thumb, I'm playing the low note, and then I'm playing the up with that, and I'm kind of palming the pick because I'm going to need that at some point later. And it goes like this. And the trick is to just make sure you get all three of those together. This is important stuff. You can probably join the circus after you learn this. So you're going to need this. So that one, you're just cruising along. There's a nice little bass melody that goes behind it. And then it goes to the next part. So it's, a very, it's kind of a clean sound at first. You're kind of just I'll kind of try to vary how hard I hit it to, you know, how distorted it is. And then for the next part, you really need some gain, so I'll kick it all the way in. And that part is. So this sound, it really is to get it, make it sound, you have to, the springs, it's the Floyd Rose, it's kind of very specific to this. You can do it on other bridges, but this is the one if you want to, what it does is it kind of gives this warbly sound when you pull up on it, if you, hey, it kind of does it on its own too. That's going to be my next song. So when you hit those harmonics kind of makes like a Star Trek sound. And that's the part. Is this, the way I discovered this sound is there's a master guitarist named Brad Gillis. And when Randy Rhodes uh, left the planet, from Ozzy's band, this guy Brad Gillis became the guitar player, so we just assume he must be the greatest guitar player in the world since he's taken Randy Rhodes' place. And so we were watching these Ozzy concerts, and he was doing that. I don't know if that was exactly that, or he's, he's doing all these tricks like that, so I kind of stole that from him. Uh, does, I'm, you're not getting any money out of this, Brad. So that's where that came from. The parts besides the, you know, it's like, you're hitting those and and then in between those is this the tritones come around again and then it moves up that's the uh, that's eighth and ninth or eighth and ninth fret and then the next time it moves up to so if you're going up a, a step and a half you're always staying within the diminished Okay, so on the harmonics where you're making the space sounds, which 
that should always be your goal is to make space sounds when you're playing guitar. Uh, I'm, I'm hitting harmonic on the fifth fret. You know, I'm trying to hit those three, the D, G, and B string, but I'm kind of just hitting whatever I hit. And then the same seventh fret. Okay, so I'll try, I'll show you that one more time. Half speed. All right, so here's the whole thing at full speed. Um, the tricky part is to get from the circusy sound kind of cleaned up and then jumping it into full bore so you can get full phaser sounds. Okay, so now for the solo for this song, after it goes through all that, we've already played the tri tritones. So when it jumps to the solo, it goes up another half step and you play, and it's playing. And then it jumps into. Lots of triangles, lots of shapes, and lots of chaos. When it gets to the, you know, after all that stuff, and it gets to the sort of triangles, the genesis of how I, you know, got to the point of playing things like, is uh, years ago, Joe Satrani had given me a million exercises that have saved my life over time. And one of the greatest ones is an exercise where you're picturing a triangle coming over the guitar. So if you were to make that shape and keep moving it, it would be. And it would sound like this. And Joe would be appalled if he heard me play it like that. So Joe, if you're watching, Rewind that and forget you saw that. I just fell in love with sort of the sound of those exercises and I started putting them into solos. And the great thing is, is you, cover, you hit almost every note there is. So no matter what key you're in, you're gonna be in key for half of the solo. You know, something's gonna work in there and it goes by so fast people will forget. So pro tip, play triangles and something will happen. So yeah, I'll give you an example of how this goes. You know, it kind of starts off. And then when it gets crazy and you start to play these triangles, you can hear it kind of. So, you know, it's a useful tool for wanting the thing to go in a weird direction or something. And to be honest, a lot of these exercises, you can just start to make up your own shapes. practice those and it'll teach your fingers to do things they probably don't want to do, things they shouldn't be doing, and definitely stuff that your parents don't want to hear you practicing. All right, so I'm going to try to play through the solo. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but this is what I think it is. And maybe give you an example of what some of this stuff sounds like. <laughs> So as you can see, the, you know, it does get, it starts to do shapes and things that can get crazy, can sound wild, and then kind of just emphasizes when it comes back in, because it'll come out of that solo. And it kind of, you know, kind of like gets crazy and it brings you back to normal at some point. So yeah, so a lot of these solos are, you know, a lot of times when I go to do a solo, obviously the bass part underneath my solo is not going to be probably something very normal to start with. And so it's kind of wide open. You can 
almost do whatever you want, but a lot of times I'll try to figure out what the bass is doing and make a key out of that. I can promise you it's not a key that you're going to find in Mel Bay books. Uh, so sometimes I'll start there, sometimes I'll just, he'll be playing something crazy, so I'll try to match it for uh, the rhythm or something. But um, a lot of this stuff lends itself to hopefully you stumble across things that you wouldn't have found if you were actually trying to engineer it in a way of like, okay, what key is this in? Let's play it in that key. Uh, you know, a lot of things can be accomplished by just being, starting some of these shapes and things, starting on one note. If you wouldn't know one note in a song, you take that, you start building triangles off of it, different shapes, different things. Eventually you'll probably come across something that you haven't heard before and something new and invent your own thing. Okay, for this song, uh, Winona's Big Brown Beaver, uh, it starts off with a slide kind of part, and here's what it sounds like. <laughs> Here's that at a slower speed. Okay, so what that is, is uh, the melody is more triangles. It's basically playing, I'll play it without the slides so you can kind of see what it is a little better. But the notes are going. So this little next part where it goes up and kind of goes along with the vocal, it slides up to the uh, 15th fret on the B string, it's the up to D. And then it does the uh, B and G strings together, sort of 11th and 12th. The 12th, fret, 12th fret on the D string. Okay, so the first part, you're basically you're, you're starting on the fifth fret on the A string and you're kind of doing a tritone, you know, five, six, seven across the A, D, and G strings. So it's good to practice the those are always fun. That's up the 11th and 12th. All right, let's try that with the slide at half speed. Okay, and here it is at full speed. All right, this next song is from a band I was in in high school. It's my high school band. It was called Possessed. Still is called Possessed. Uh, and this was, uh, we did this album, I think I was in 10th grade, and this was the first song on it. And it's, I still remember how to play the song because it was like, I like playing it, and it's a cool song. And 
people ask me about every now and then. So here's what it sounds like. <laughs> Okay, so here's that uh, slower. So breaking this one down, it starts off and then it is sort of like a galloping metal. You know, muted. So this first part, the transitioning of that. There's a lot of I've seen people play so many different ways. Some of the ways it seems like I don't even know why they're doing it so hard, but the way I do it is like this. Regular, just F, fifth chord, uh, then just like you're playing an E chord. So if you put them together, your hand doesn't move. It's very efficient. Okay, this next part is I remember being 15 and being like, this is, what, what are we doing? Uh, it's very bizarre. It's And essentially what you're doing is you're trying to move your hand up as you're playing very fast. Yeah, so it's it's weird. It's uh, the notes are, but when we wrote it, it was it, it was just more of a, a shape or a feel where you're just you're playing fast and you're just moving your hand, and that's what comes out is. So that's the, the gist of that part. And then it goes to the part which is sort of the, the hook of the song, which is. This part here, it's, uh, it's a single note, sort of, this is the super evil part of the song. Uh, you're just picking as fast as you can. like pull-offs. It's, 
very much you're just picking and kind of just moving your hands. <laughs> it's hard to describe, but you're just moving your hands as you're playing through it. <laughs> So when you're moving this, going through this part here, you're playing. Then you'll go up to this. And then the second half is. So when you move to the sixth fret. Kind of makes your ear you don't expect it, so it's kind of trippy. It kind of makes you feel weird. So when you're moving through this, the, the, the first half of this, you're just playing straight. Then the second half of it is more. Remember really focusing on trying to have as little movement as possible to be able to get. So I think if you're trying to learn how to do that sort of fast picking, it's good to focus on, you know, not moving too far away and trying to just keep your hand. This is the kind of stuff you'll do when you're 12. You'll sit here for hours and focus on keeping your finger from going too far. Yeah, well, one thing I've noticed is, uh, I'm noticing it now, grabbing it lower on, on the pick, to probably to keep it from getting too far. And um, yeah, there is more of an angle. Instead of being straight across, it seems to go faster if you're at, a, if you're at an angle. See, you're hitting it like that, it's kind of catching it. So if you're at an angle. Okay, so coming out of the single picking part, goes into a heavier, it's all fifth, you know. Uh, starting on third fret, let's move over one string, then move up a fret to the fourth, fourth and fifth. So you're moving, you're moving over a string every hit. Then sixth fret. And then after that, it goes back to. And that's just third fret, first, second, and then first. And the big key to all this is getting the palm meeting right. So if you move your hand around, you'll figure out where you'll start to feel the low end come out. Mine's about right in front of the bridge. So here's all those parts at a slower speed.
right, well, thanks for uh, watching my episode of Riff Lords. Uh, hopefully you've uh, learned something about how these Primus songs are constructed and put together. I know I have, so now I'm sorry if I mess them up. I have no excuse. I just learned them all in this video. And, uh, you know, hopefully it'll inspire you to take this thing and go, well, it's a piece of wood with six strings and some wires, and you can make a bunch of any sound you want, do whatever you want, hopefully come up with something new that nobody's done, and then I can steal it from you. Um, and yeah, hopefully this will inspire you to make space sounds. <laughs>